Hi, welcome back to another live session with me. So what is our goal for today? Today we want to uh, use our classification models and we want to use different forms of the input data. So in the last live sessions we trained our advanced models. We had different advanced models like logistic regression, support vector machine, decision trees, and so on. Um, other boost classifier with custom base estimator was the last one from our last live session. Or no, the last live session was the uh, ensembled methods with um, staking. So I think then it would was the <clears throat> the live session before. So basically, what we did was we trained all the classifiers, and we wrote down the training accuracy that we got from our local model. And we wrote down the test accuracy, which we got from our Kegel submission. But everything what we did was with our reduced feature set. So we got 21 features from the pre-processing. And we didn't train the, or we, we didn't apply the column transformer to the binary features. So that was our model common that we that we used in the name like for the submission file or when we save our tra uh, trained model, uh, we created like a folder uh, features reduced that we uh, uh, know that we are uh, handling the reduced feature set uh, as input and the non-transform binary also uh, included in the folder name that we know that we didn't transform the, the binary features. So you see this in the advanced model folder. If we go to like models or submissions, it's the same like for submissions. We here have the features reduced non-transform binary. So we used this Jupyter notebook with this model comment um, and run all our models. But we could now use also the reduced feature set, but apply the column transformer also to the binary features. That would be another possibility to test all our classifiers on this pipeline. So it would be the same input uh, from the features, also the 21 features in total, but we apply the, uh, we, we change the, the pipeline for the column transformer. So that would be one possibility. And uh, the other probabilities or the other uh, models that we can use are um, when we don't apply the column transformer to the binary features. We could use instead all features. So all features mean that we have 1062 features, but we would likely overfit the training data. And therefore in our current function that we use, uh, maybe you remember this from uh, earlier live sessions that we implemented this, uh, this function. Um, we then use another step in the pipeline and this step is a feature reduction set. So we use the principal component analysis to reduce our feature set. This one is implemented in our functions folder. So there is only one Python file here. And if you look in the Python file, you will see that we 
also can apply different transformers here but also if we see that our training data uh, so the number of features is below 50 we use the reduce pipeline that only has the column transformer and the training of the uh, the classifier in here so two-step pipeline and if the number of features is higher than 50 so our feature set that is not reduced we will use the principal component analysis as the third uh, as a second step after we apply the column transformer okay so if you are interested in all the uh, all these files all these folders in the description you find as always a link to the github repository where you can download the whole uh, github repository to your local uh, pc and then you can use uh, all the python functions and, and all the uh, jupyter notebooks and so on so in our function that we have we implemented something very very good to compare the different models that we now want to to train so <clears throat> if we scroll down we have the create save model report function and what this function does is um, we save like the, the model name uh, with the comment the uh, f1 score of the negative and positive class our training accuracy and the area under the roc curve is saved in a csv file and every model that we train um, and we apply the create save model report function to it um, it creates a new row in this csv file with all these different uh, evaluation metrics and i can show you this one because um, during the time we trained all our classifier this csv file was written and this is here the classification report file and here you see all our different models that we trained and evaluated and of course you see some some models uh, multiple times because sometimes we had little errors in our code and we always wrote down um, our our metrics in the csv file so it's there are also some duplicates in here of course but to compare different models in here today i, I want to use um, this function and therefore i want to uh, use the three Jupyter notebooks that we currently didn't touch and I want to train uh, these classifiers so that are these classifiers are also saved in the classification report the metrics we will optimize the hyperparameters and after that we will open the CSV file in Excel uh, the first step will be to delete all the duplicates and then rank our classifiers like for the accuracy and look which classifier is the best and maybe we see some patterns um, for example that um, always if we don't transform the binary features we improved our training accuracy for example so then we could say, um, not in general, but for the Kegel Titanic competition, um, it is not worth to uh, apply a standard scalar or min-max scalar 
to the binary features that we got from the one hot encoding during the data um, preprocessing. So here I have the second Jupyter notebook open uh, from the overview of the notebook it should be the same I hope so and here are some minor mistakes in here so let me quickly copy some some functions here and there so it's easier for for me to correct these minor minor issues so we start by loading all libraries that we need and then create this folder structure so this would be the second step before we define our models this creates the new folder so if we look in the models so you see here is our second folder where we transform all uh, features this is in the folder models where we save the pre-trained models and also in the submission uh, folder so now we read all all features this should be the same because the features that we use are the same we only apply here you see we um, scale all features in the Jupyter notebook that we used before we manually selected the feature names that we want to apply to the column transformer and now we simply use all uh, all columns that are in the um, training set so you see cross validation here and this should be also the same but to be sure i copy paste it and now we can apply the first model that would be the logistic regression with the standard scalar and this should be running perfect with a parameter c of 0.3 we are in between 0.2 and 0.4 so here we don't have to to change the parameter grid we keep this as it is and we could of course go back and forth and try to see okay which confusion matrix is is better so we can compare the true negatives and the true positives for example uh, here if we apply all features uh, to the column transformer we have a true negatives uh, 122 and here 137 so for the true negative um, if we don't apply the column transformer to the binary features it is better and the two positives are 85 and here the the two positives are 84 so below also below <clears throat> and therefore we can say for the logistic regression and our reduced feature set it is better to apply the column transformers only to the non-binary features okay so the next one is the support vector machine and here we have the first one is the rbf kernel i think this is also the same 
radial basis function, yes. And we see min max scalar, no. Here we see standard scalar, and so I want to use also the standard scalar here. Okay. Classification parameter C is two, so in between this is fine. And so we go a little bit a little bit quicker um, through these uh, machine learning algorithms. And here I want to disable the scrolling. Polynomial kernel. I think we also applied the standard scalar, yes. So the parameter C is 0 0.5. So let's increase this parameter and maybe include here the parameter 2 for the degree. Okay, we find 3 and 0 0.6. Perfect. Now the linear support vector machine. Use also the standard scalar. Okay, we got an error. Linear SVC predict object has not a good predict probability. Okay. Ah, so here's linear SVC, and we have to use the standard SVC model. Set the probability to true and use the linear kernel. Okay. Invalid parameter. Okay. The penalty is not, not defined for the SVC. Okay, let's decrease this value. Okay. So the next one should be decision tree classifier. Okay, so we didn't or I didn't use this one so let's quickly implement this one decision tree classifier we use the standard scalar Uh, this was the one that took such a long time because there are so so many uh, different models to, to train because here we have uh, a wide list of uh, of parameters so let's copy this one also for the min max scalar And after, so after the decision tree classifier, we have here our extra tree classifier. Yes. Perfect. So this should be running, I think, that we don't exceed our boundaries of the parameter grid. Therefore, I also start uh, this line that will 
continue the um, if when when the first one uh, was uh, or is finished that we don't lose any any time here and here we have the extra tree classifier with the stun standard scaler let's start this also and then I think we have to wait a couple of minutes. So it's time for you to to grab a coffee. I think we are we will need uh, like five five minutes to to complete the training of the decision tree classifiers. So let's pause for a second and I will be right back when um, the decision tree classifier is finished. Uh, I will not cut this live stream, <clears throat> but you will see if the screen changes. So if you see the, uh, the Jupyter Notebook again, the training was, uh, was done. So you can uh, skip this part as long as you see the, um, the, the title logo, let's say.
So we are back. We trained our or both models, both decision tree classifier. So we have the first one with the standard scaler, and we see that all hyperparameters that uh, are in the range between one to uh, two up to ten. So we didn't exceed the grid here. And for the min max scaler, we also didn't exceed the grid. So perfect one here. Now we can go to the extra tree classifier here. So run this submission or create the model, not the submission. We have a max depth and it is two and three here. And maybe also 100. So now we have a depth of six. So let's try seven and eight. And maybe also copy this one for the min max scaler. So we have a max depth of eight and number of, of the estimator of 110. So use nine and 10 also here and we delete the first few ones. Okay, we have a max depth of seven and numbers of estimators 120. So that's enough for us. And we do the same thing with the min max scaler. Extra tree classifier. The next one is a gradient boosting classifier. So here we are also in between the grid. So we continue here also with the gradient boosting classifier. So let's train the standard scaler. Okay, do we have another learning right here? No, so this is good for us. And use also the min max scatter. <clears throat> okay. The next model is the random forest classifier. In 90 maybe is a little bit high, use 80 and 85. Mm, also increase the max depth. OK, 
Okay, perfect. So, try the min max scalar. So, the training of all these models takes some time, of course. <clears throat> 20. So, each time when we run the model, um, a new line in our CSV uh, classification report is created. Okay, we leave this as it is. So now we have the k nearest neighbor classifier. I think also this should be here. The next one, k nearest neighbors classifier. Yes. This runs very fast. Here's the next one after the k nearest neighbors is the xgb classifier which is also here the next one <clears throat> Okay, perfect. If you want to, you could also like uh, decrease the steps between the parameters in the grid to find maybe uh, another combination of hyperparameters uh, that increase the test score a little bit. Uh, like we see here, we have a max depth of two a learning rate of 0 0.05 and the numbers of estimators is 200 so you could also run the numbers of estimators 201 and 199 but uh, it should be more an educational video and not try to to get the last out of the machine learning algorithms and of course you have uh, the the problem like with with overfitting as well. If you uh, tune the the model for the training data up to the min uh, up to the maximum. So for for my case to find a good set of hyperparameters is uh, is fine. So now we have the Adaboost classifier. And I can delete this one because first we use the standard ones. So the standard or the default base estimator of the Adaboost classifier is the decision tree. Therefore, here is no base estimator defined. The learning rate could be a little bit higher, maybe. Also, the numbers of estimators. So, let's take a look at the learning curve. Yes, could be a little bit, a little bit higher.
Okay, fine. The next one is with the min max scalar. So it's at 0 0.5 and 300 as well. I think we added 0 0.5 in here. Yes. Okay. And now we have um, other boost classifier that uses um, a base estimator that we uh, previously created and therefore I have to I have to create or load all the different models that we previously trained. So these are the different models and here I have the SVC one so the random forest takes a lot of time we will not train this one now since the SVC model shouldn't run because here we said that we only can models that support the sample weight uh, attribute and I'm interesting if this runs. No. Yes, this didn't run and I think it doesn't make a lot of sense to use different other boost classifiers because like we saw from our previously uh, created models. So only the other boost classifier the logistic regression we had a much higher score but i think it is it is good to compare the the base estimators and not we do, i think we don't have to um to use the the other boost classifier for our comparison so because the training of the models took a bit more time that, than I thought uh, and we are currently nearly or more than 50 minutes online. Uh, I now want to compare the um, both Jupyter Notebooks that we currently used. So where we used the reduced feature set for both uh, classification models but one in in one uh, Jupyter notebooks uh, notebook we applied the the um, column transformer only to the non-binary features and in the 
uh, notebooks that we currently run uh, there we applied the column transformer to all features so also the binary and I think the um, the other two open Jupyter notebooks where we use not the reduced feature set but all features I think that uh, I will run both of them tomorrow in a live session and compare them I think that makes more sense so let me quickly open the CSV file and then I, we can compare different the different models so let me quickly switch the application that I show and then I have to fit it to the screen okay so I think the first thing would be to filter all the columns or to sort them like the main evaluation method or metric where which is for us interesting is the accuracy so let's filter the accuracy from the largest to the smallest and I think here we see some some interesting things so the first two models are a standard scalar where we have the reduced feature set and don't transform the binary features then we have xgb where we keep all features then we also have SVC but with min max scalar standard scalar but I think for the SVC we used the uh, we we added our uh, our kernel right here he is, this is here so I think the problem is that oh let's let's make this let's redo this because the problem is I trained models before I implemented the test validation split so there are models that are trained with 30% more training data and therefore could be uh, have a higher uh, accuracy so maybe let's create a new column like new model and so every time we train our models a new a new line was added so the features reduced transform all this is from from today so this is these are all trained today so another possibility or another good thing would be to add an, another column 
in this report and to add the current time and date or only the date when the model was was trained or the the uh, line was added to the report so therefore we could see which models uh, we trained in the last uh, days and so these features reduced non-transform binary these are new, also new ones i would say but i think that all models here before this is the pipe so in this name is pipeline and therefore it is not an advanced model but a base model so all these more or less 200 models above <clears throat> are not new so therefore i would like to also sort of accuracy but only use or only see the new models and here we see that the SVC is the best so this the SVC is very very good and you see from the model comment that no transform binary is in the lead so transform all the first one is here all these models above are better and all models don't apply the um or all models before don't scale the binary features so here we see clearly here this model also has an accuracy of 0 0.8 and our best models got an accuracy of 0 0.88 87.86 and so on and here are the transformed all yes <clears throat> so from this uh, quick analysis we can conclude that it in for for the titanic kegel competition it doesn't make sense to transform the binary features so to apply uh, any scalar to the binary features this hurts in the accuracy and also we see that <clears throat> the svc models are good the extra tree classifier also but what we can do also is to uh, delete duplicates so how can i here delete duplicates remove duplicates select all yes Okay. So one thing that I'm missing is that or what I currently don't know is how do we achieve the training accuracy of 0 0.88 because when we get back in the jupiter lab we see that our best models are the adabus classifier applied with the logistic regression 0 0.78 and not or it was the ah this is the test accuracy okay 
we have to look at the training accuracy. So do we see here something like 0 0.88? Maybe eight six eight five. Mm. Okay. Interesting. So it could be that some of these models are also not uh, tr uh trained via the training validation split and what I want to implement in our function is so in here we should have our train validation split mm, no here is our validation So then it should be at the top. So here we have the splitting. <coughs> and I think what would be a good a good model or so in the next video we will um, finish comparing these different Jupyter notebooks. And then I think it could be good to uh, like we we have our our hyperparameters that we uh, optimized, so we keep them as they are, and then we build like a second Python function here, like. Uh, f underscore classification underscore final that didn't include this training test split and only find out the best hyperparameters with 100% of the training data, train the classifier and then predict uh, the outcome and make the submission. And Therefore, we could see, okay, can we improve our test score from the Kaggle website when we use 100% of the training data and not only 70%? Uh, because keep in mind, I think we have around, so it's written here, not 900 samples. So 70% of 900 is is huge if you have like uh, two or three hundred uh, three million samples you could say okay if if you cut out 30 percent of them uh, your distributional features or single entries are represented but if you delete uh, 30 percent of 900 it's i don't know 280 samples then uh, there could be valuable information that are not in the training set after you apply the uh, training validation split. So that could be also uh, an important step. Okay, so this is the outlook of the next two videos. I think I will be live tomorrow on Sunday and on Monday so then we can finish both of these parts in the Kegel Titanic, uh, Kegel Titanic competition. So therefore like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you don't uh, miss any new of these videos. I hope that you learned a lot. Have a great evening.